Hello, my name is Michael Ransky and I'm a recent graduate from Midview High School of Grafton, Ohio. This summer, I was under the guidance of Medhat Askar in the Allergen Laboratories, and our project was titled Rare Null Alleles Within HLAA, Deriving a Testing Strategy for Unresolved Null Alleles. Now, within DNA, there's something known as the Major Histocompatibility Complex, or MHC, that codes for the human leukocyte antigen, or HLA. The HLA is responsible for deriving the protein codons that are expressed on the surfaces of cells, and the B and T cells sniff out, per se, these antigens and to see if there's any foreign cells in need of destruction. So if we imagine a cell is kind of like a peach and it has a lot of fuzz on it, and each of the little fuzz is either classified as class 1 or class 2, and what the fuzz is is the protein antigen signatures that are red, and the way that the B and T cells read these cells is by interacting with the peptide, grooving, peptide binding groove up top here. Now, there are naive B cells that come out of your bone marrow, and when they interact with the host cell, they recognize that it is part of the host and that it's okay. But when it interacts with something like a virus or a bacteria, it automatically registers that its protein signatures are different and therefore it's not going to like it. From that, it develops a memory and from that memory, antibodies are created so that the virus or bacteria is killed. Now, later on, when that same memory B cell interacts with that antigen again, it's going to remember that and it's going to send out those antibodies to kill it. So then, within the whole concept of immunology in transplant medicine, there's something known as serology, and that uses the subject's blood cells to test for reactions to certain reagents to classify the antigens that are on the cells. Serological typing provides this understanding and is considered low resolution of the HLA because something such as AO2 could really be several different proteins. Within the actual DNA of the HLA, that's where we get the very specific allele level that we need. And for the main purposes of transplant medicine, we look at the, the locations of class 1, class 2, specifically A, B, C, D, R, D, Q, and D, P. Now, how do we investigate the DNA to determine what A is or what B is? Well, it's something known as sequence-based typing, and that provides the high resolution, where we get down to the allele level. And at the Cleveland Clinic Algen Laboratories, we use a special biosystems DNA analyzer seen here. Now, HLA is very complex, and it has just as complex a nomenclature. So if you recall back in that DNA strand, we have the locus. This one's A. The codon here signifies DNA, and then we have the type, 29, and then the O1 after that type is the allele specificity. So then why do we sequence the HLA? Well, bone marrow is really the wellspring of the immune system, and that's where all of the antigen expressions are controlled. And when a patient has leukemia, their bone marrow is degraded to the point where they sometimes need a bone marrow transplantation. Now, as the bone marrow from the donor is given to the recipient, the two fight each other to the point where one overtakes the other. Hopefully, the donor, donor's bone marrow overcomes and is able to, in the process, kill the cancer. However, if the HLA between the donor and the patient is different, and as few as one mismatch, something known as graft-versus-host disease develops. Now, what exactly is graft-versus-host disease? Well, when a person has a bone marrow transplant that is a mismatch at even one allele, you start to develop a sort of um, response. This is a mild response where the skin starts to discolor, the melanin in the skin starts to be destroyed. However, in more severe cases, we can have it to the point where everything is starting to bleed, internal organs, blood vessels, the skin, and this is what we're trying to avoid by sequencing the HLA. So in order to prevent GVHD or graft rejection from occurring, we have to try and match the patient 
to a related family member or an unrelated family member as best as possible. Now how we do that is we look at their HLA. So here in this table we have the A, B, C, and the DR. Now the reason why there's two per person is because we get each one, each location of A, B, C, or whatever from our mom and our dad. So if we look here at the patient, he or she has an A0101 and an A2901. And the sibling here could not be a match because it has an O201. So we then have to maybe go to the unrelated files. Now as we see here, although they match in the A location, out in the B here, the patient has a 1501 where the unrelated has is homozygous for 0801. So that wouldn't work either. So then imagine we try and find and develop a system where we have all unrelateds in a file so that we can pull it up for if a patient needs to be matched with that. However, there's something known as a null allele that doesn't have an antigen expression. So when they do it in serology, when they do the reagents to try and find the antigens, it doesn't come up and it's just reported as a blank entry. So only null alleles can be discovered using high resolution sequencing. But even then, for certain cases like HLA-A01, there are certain exons or regions of DNA that are specifically sequenced and in years past that hadn't been sequenced. So the null alleles in its expression was not discovered. So in order to understand the function of null alleles, we have this nice little diagram here. So the green cells here are part of the patient. And imagine the different stripes on the cells are just different expressions of the proteins. However, if you notice, we have a white strand there. That white strand represents a null allele. So now imagine this is a leukemia patient and we needed to have a bone marrow transplant. And everything else was matched up except that null allele in which, as we see here, is what the cells just came up. Now we have a purple strand instead of that white strand. And what that represents is now that allele is expressed. So there's an actual protein on the surface of the cell. So when the patient's B cells interact with these new cells that are coming in, it's going to recognize that it's different than what the actual patient cells used to be. So it's going to send out antibodies in response. However, we have to remember that in bone marrow transplants, everything comes along with it. So the donor's B cells also come along and interact with the patient's cells. Now the same way goes. The donor's B cells aren't used to identifying or ignoring that unexpressed null allele. So now when they interact with that cell, they're going to identify that it's something different and thus also throw out an uh, antibodies to try and kill those cells. So this is kind of the process that G G GVHD can start in a patient where the patient's uh, B cells and antibodies start killing the donor cells and the donor does the reverse. So then there are things called rare null alleles that are specifically have only been reported under three times throughout the whole world. And these rare null alleles are especially difficult to identify because of small one or two nucleotide base insertions in the sequencing. So Although this is a little bit busy, it, it kind of gets the whole sense of how minute these base insertions are. So in order to identify one of the null, rare null alleles, HLA-A0104 null, we have to compare it to the more common HLA-A010101, which is seen on top. And what follows that are the actual bases of adenine, cytosine, guanine, etc. And underneath it, as you can see on the bottom, there's that A0104 null. And the dashes mean that the bases are the same. So for basically the entire sequencing, it is exactly the same except for down at base 628, where for the A0104 null, there is one single C insertion there. So then the purpose of this study was to try and identify as many allele or haplotype associations across the HLA for as many potential rare null alleles within the A locus as possible because as I stated in the past, these exons or regions of the DNA to identify those base insertions had previously been uninvestigated 
Therefore, we are not entirely certain if they existed or not. So if we develop associations between rare null alleles and other components of the HLA, we then can determine when we need to test for these null alleles.